Hello, Junior 3. How are you today? Today, we're going to talk about ancient Egypt. We're going to talk about pottery and painting. So let's start. Good. So the Egyptians were the first ones in the whole world to create pottery. They got all the clay they needed to create these beautiful objects from the Nile River. At first, they started making these long strands of clay, like the one you can see up there. And then they placed them around in circles to make the walls of clay, okay? And, they, and then they smoothened out the walls. So at first, they looked like all strands of clay, and then they became these beautiful bases that we have here. Okay, so uh, what do you do when you start creating some pottery. Well, first you create the shape and then you need to put it in the oven. Of course, they didn't have ovens at, the, at that time. So what they did, and because Egypt is a super hot place, is that they placed these new objects they created under the sun. So they got very, very hot, they sealed, and the pottery was ready to be used. Let's see what they used it for. Okay, as they were farmers, they created pottery to store the grains on all the foods they needed inside, okay? So they also created pottery to hold water and food. Good. So um, there were different kinds of pottery. The ones that were bigger and more beautiful they were for the pharaoh of course and his court remember that when we talk about courts is everybody that is around the pharaoh okay and then we've got the poor and working class those ones were the ones that used pottery to create toys for their children for example dolls or toy ships or even board games like the one we have got here good Okay, so when archaeologists discovered all these ancient paintings, they did it in the tombs. When they got into the tombs, they saw that all the walls and the ceiling were covered with paintings. This was because Egyptians used to think that the one that passed away would take all these beautiful images with him or with her. Okay, so... Um, these paintings that they were inside the tomb, they were not meant to be seen for humans, by human eyes, okay? So they painted everything just for the one who had passed away. Good. Okay, as they painted inside the tombs, art was meant to last forever and ever. So the ones that were inside these these pictures or paintings wanted to be represented at as great people to be in a splendorous way for example the pharaoh here in this painting we can see the pharaoh that he's he looks larger and bigger than anyone else that is that is because he was considered very important that is why he's very very big in this picture go and how did they do to have all the same figures? Because as we have seen in the previous paintings, they all look alike. They're all the same, except for the pharaoh that uh, he looked larger. Well, they used these grids. With these grids, they could have out the proportions, like to have all the shoulders in the same place, all the, uh, the heads in the same place, and they got all the same images for every kind of human they wanted to paint. Good. Okay, and why are Egyptians painting sideways? As you can see, their heads are pointing to one way or the other, but their bodies are facing forward. They're facing to the front, okay? This was because Egyptians wanted to show the body as complete as possible. For example, they showed the, the body and the chest looking forward so we can know if it's a girl, if it's a boy, if it's a child, okay? 
and the head, it was always being sideways because they, they paid close attention to the nose. So in that way, they could get a perfect nose every time they painted the head sideways. Okay, so the head sideways and the body facing front. Good. Let's talk about colors. So Egyptians thought that colors were very, very important. And artists at that time couldn't just go to a shop and get some color and colors and paints. At that time, they had to create their own paints, okay? So they went around the Nile River, they got some miner minerals from the soil, and they mixed that up with glue, some glue that they got from animals or plants. So the paint needed to be uh, strong enough to hold to the wall forever and ever, because remember that we said that Egyptians wanted art to be forever, but it had to be soft enough to color all the shapes that they were drawing, okay? So these are some of the colors that they used. Good. And here we have got some of the colors that they used again. We have blue, red, yellow, green, white. Egyptians thought that colors represented, they had a special meaning. Each color had a special meaning. For examples, for example, when they uh, painted men, they mostly painted uh, them in red and women in yellow, okay? That was to show that men who worked outside under the sun got their skin like reddish. And the women that were working inside the house, usually with their children, they looked more yellowish. They had this yellow color on their skin. And we also see some children in some of the paintings. They didn't have clothes at all. And uh, most of them are shown, showing their fingers inside their mouths. That's why, that's how we know that they are children. And here we have got the different colors. So blue, it represented the sky, water, and the heavens, and creation. Red was the color of fire, anger, chaos, victory, and hostility. Yellow represented eternal, indestructible life. Green was the color of vegetation. Let's think about the grass and the, and the trees. Growth, joy, and fertility. Fertility, they needed fertility for the plants to grow. Remember that farming was very important at that time. And white is the color of cleanliness. Everything that means it is very pure and clean. Power, purity, and simplicity. Good. So this is all the information that we are going to see for today. Let's jump into our activity for today. So remember that today's activity, you need to write down the answers using pen or pencil. Here, we need to complete the form that is missing. Remember that all the forms are affirmative, that we say yes, negative that we say no, and interrogative that we have the question mark, as we have got up here. For example, Egyptians created pottery, okay? That would be the affirmative form. The negative form, we say no, Egyptians didn't create pottery. Remember that, as it says over there, did and past never ever go together. So Egyptians didn't create pottery. And interrogative, these questions are going to start with did, all of them, okay? So, did Egyptians create pottery? Again, if we have did, we cannot place the past. So, did, it, did Egyptians create pottery? Good. So, let's take a look at number one that is here, up here. It says, Egyptians painted tombs. Now, you have to create that same sentence. You are going to turn it into negative and then into interrogative. Let's take a look at number three. We only have the interrogative form. So you need to create the negative and the affirmative. Number four, 
we have the negative. So you need to create the affirmative and interrogative. Remember that all interrogative uh, forms in this exercise, they will start with did, okay? And number five, we have got the uh, affirmative form and we need to create the negative and the interrogative. So that will be our first activity for today. And the second one, I promise it will be short. It says, take a look at this real painting. What do these colors represent? Remember, we talked about the colors. So take a look at this real picture and start writing what these colors represent. So whenever you are done, you just send us your work and we'll be contacting you back. Bye-bye. See you soon.